Good evening and welcome. We'll get started in just a couple minutes as people are joining the meeting this evening. Well, we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, again, I uh, just want to welcome everyone to the um, our open house this evening to discuss the South DeKalb Transit Initiative Project. Um, just a couple of housekeeping items I do just want to go over very quickly um, this evening. Our event time is from 6 p.m. until 7.30, and that actually does include time for the presentation and for Q&A. Please use the Q&A section to submit your project-specific questions or comments, and we will address as many comments and questions as time allows. Um, again, your input is welcome. So we also have a polling question towards the end, and um, so please just stay, um, stay involved and, and stay entertained as far as how you can uh, participate in that polling question towards the end. Uh, this presentation will be posted on Marta's project website, along with additional information um, and past meetings. So the project website is southdecaptransit.com. And if you have any questions about Marta's services, um, we encourage you to go to their website, um, their customer service website at customer, custserve at itsmarta.com or I'll call their um, hotline at 404-848-5000. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. So I just want to introduce our project team for today, or for the this evening. Uh, first, I'd like to start with Marta. Uh, Tracy Robertson is the Marta project manager. Um, Shelly Pert is the Marta AGM of planning. We have Marcus Arnold, who serves as the director of federal corridors and hubs for Marta. Michael Rafshun, who is the manager of external affairs. We have Casey Marks, who is the WSP project manager. We have Sanan Senaroy, who is the WSP deputy project manager. And let me introduce myself. My name is Vita Mannings, and I am with the collaborative firm. And with that, I would like to turn uh, the next slide over to Michael Rafshin. Michael? All right, well, thank you for joining us this evening. As Vita said, I'm Michael Rafshin with MARTA. Um, so our focus to this evening is specifically about South DeKalb and the South DeKalb Transit Initiative, but I did want to give a quick update on some of the other projects that MARTA uh, has going on right now in and around the community. Um, the, first, the first two projects are arterial rapid transit projects. Uh, this arterial rapid transit is like an advanced bus service where we provide additional amenities at bus stops. We, some of the buses have transit signal priority so they can get around traffic faster. They have transit signal priority, which allows the bus to get through intersections quicker. And we have two of those projects. One of them is along Candler Road, connecting Avondale Marta Station to GSU Panthersville campus, running along Candler Road. And then we have another one along Buford Highway connecting Lindbergh Center Station to Doraville Station along Buford Highway. So those are two of our ART, arterial rapid transit projects that, uh, that are being built currently. We also are, have endeavored to renovate all 38 MARTA stations to retrofit them, new signage, new lighting. Uh, repaving the parking lots and so forth at all of our stations. You've probably seen if you're around, uh, if you live near the Indian Creek Station, that one is currently uh, under repair. Um, and we also have two transit hubs. Uh, transit hubs are areas 
where you have sheltered waiting areas, you have freeze vending machines, you have a good MARTA police presence, uh, lighting and all the things that you would need at a transit center. And we have two of those, one at the mall at South DeKalb, that is along that Candler Road Arterial Rapid Transit project. And then we have one, and we'll discuss this one more in depthly because it connects to our project. And that one is at the Mall of Stonecrest. So we have two transit hubs that we're building, one in, at the South DeKalb Mall, one at the Stonecrest Mall, and then two arterial rapid transit projects along Memorial Drop, I'm sorry, uh, Candler Road and Beaufort Highway. We also, we have two master planning projects, uh, one at Kensington and one at Indian Creek. There, we are rezoning the properties and working with the private developer community to institute transit-oriented development, both at Kensington and Indian Creek stations. And now we will discuss more the South DeKalb Transit Initiative, which is a study that looks at transit, high capacity transit along the, in the South DeKalb corridor. Awesome, thank you so much, Michael, for um, giving us that thorough overview of all the wonderful things going on in DeKalb County. Uh, that's so exciting. Well, um, thank you for talking about the entire program so everyone can have an idea of what's coming in the future. Um, but tonight, we really want to focus on the South DeKalb Transit Initiative uh, project. So tonight, uh, you will get a project overview just to bring everybody up to speed. Uh, we will go into details on the screening process and what we've been doing over the last couple of years uh, with the tier one screening results as well as the tier two screening results. And then from there, we will share with you uh, what to expect next around this project. So um, now I will give you a quick project overview. Uh, so the purpose of the South DeKalb Transit Initiative is really to continue progress on the transit expansion within the county. It's our goal to bring to fruition the goals included in the DeKalb County uh, Transit Master Plan that came out in 2019. And we're really looking to deliver a more immediate transit uh, connections for the South DeKalb residents. And this project does build off of the previous I-20E study that many, you, many of you are very familiar with, uh, where we previously um, selected a preferred alternative. And now we are expanding the study area. We're expanding the study area and we are also looking at additional options with the goal of selecting a financially feasible option uh, for the county. The study area is from downtown Atlanta all the way to the DeKalb Rockdale County line in the east. Uh, on the north side, it is um, north of the MARTA East West Blue Rail Line to the south of Boulder Crest Road, Flat Shoals Parkway, and State Route 155. And the goal really is to select a locally preferred alternative that meets the needs of the DeKalb residents and something that is financially feasible. And after we go through this uh, analysis and continue to work with all of you in, in DeKalb County and determine the best alternative, we will present that option to the MARTA board for approval. Now, a little bit about the screening process because there truly is a method to the madness. I know a lot of times you're wondering what is taking so long for us to finish, but there's a lot of technical work that goes on behind the scenes. And I'd like to share a little bit of that with you now. And this slides here basically goes over the overall methodology for the screening process. So first of all, we started with data analysis and document review which was completed in 2022. And this included existing conditions analysis, federal funding requirements, MARTA design and service guides, project goals, DeKalb County Transit Master Plan, and most importantly, input from the public like yourself. 
Uh, we did public meetings, community surveys, and really got a lot of um, information from the public. After we finished the data analysis, we moved into process development, which included setting the screening criteria, creating some scoring, um, the scale for the scoring, uh, selecting weights based on public feedback, and just setting different screening filters. This was completed in 2022. Then we went on to the tier one screening where we evaluated 10 different alternatives. We put all of this through the different criteria and filters to identify which ones were best to continue on for further consideration. Tier one was completed in 2023. And now that brings us to tier two. Tier two screening included six different alternatives and we used a more detailed analysis than tier one. And that is why we are here today. We want you to get a recap of screening number one and really delve deep into screening number two. And I will turn it over to Casey Mertz and she will do the recap and take you through tier one and tier two. Great, thank you so much, Tracy. Um, yeah, so Tracy teed that up very nicely. I'm going to cover the tier one and tier two screening processes um, that we've been following for this project. Um, just a quick note, um, I think what we'll do today is we'll focus more of our time on the tier two information. That's new information that we Marta hasn't shared with you all um, in a meeting yet. Um, all of the tier one information, if you're new to the project, if you haven't participated in one of our previous meetings, um, I recommend that you go check out the website and there's plenty of materials and videos from some of our past meetings that really dive into more of the details on the tier one part. Um, I'm gonna give a very quick refresher on the tier one, um, but if you're new to the project again, I urge you, there's lots of really good information on the website about the tier one. It'll help bring you up to uh, where we are today and how we got where we are. Um, so as a recap, um, Tracy described the, um, the, the tiered screening process. So the purpose of the tiered screening process is to start with a large number of alternatives and do a higher level analysis, narrowing that range of alternatives down to a smaller number and getting more and more narrowed and more and more detailed in our analysis as we go. Um, so when we started out the tier one um, screening last year, we had 10 alternatives, which is a pretty good number of alternatives. Um, in general, we looked at three different mode options, bus rapid transit, heavy rail transit, and light rail transit. We had two different general route types, um, interstate routes and surface street routes that, that's, that um, followed Covington Highway, and then two Western terminus options, Kensington Station and Indian Creek Station, and all of the alternatives began at the Stonecrest Transit Hub. The evaluation criteria for tier one followed really closely with our project goals and most importantly with the um, criteria that the federal government uses to evaluate federal funding grant applications. Because as Tracy mentioned, we want to set this project up for success. We want to recommend an option that can be competitive for federal funding in the future. So we looked at a lot of things, um, connectivity, potential ridership, the density um, of land use and development around the stations, both today and in the future. We looked at how long each option might take to implement and the cost that it might take to implement each, each option. Um, we also looked at equity. Um, so in addition to just how the sheer number of people and riders it would serve, we're looking at who it would serve. And we used the federal government's guidelines for um, and their tools for assessing um, equity and looking at different demographics. Um, and then we also looked at right-of-way impacts, which is a factor in, in cost, but it's also um, a, a, an, a, an additional indicator for determining, you know, just different impacts on the community in terms of um, displacements and, and right-of-way acquisitions. Um, we also weighted all of these criteria based on what we heard from our stakeholders and what we heard from um, a public survey that we conducted last year. So generally, based on the feedback, we heard that things like mobility and access and equity were most important. So those got the greatest weights during the tier one screening process. And now Vita is gonna talk um, to you a little bit more about the outreach that we did last year that got us to this point. Thank you, Casey. So yes, as Casey mentioned, um, really our approach for uh, community um, outreach was really to meet 
um, those key stakeholders, um, our key partners, really where they are. And in addition to the survey, I'll talk a little bit more about that later. We also offered a number of opportunities to hear from all stakeholders through the events and activities you see listed on your screen, which included open houses, focus groups, and public meetings. Uh, next slide, please. As I mentioned, and Casey also talked about this too, we did conduct a survey. We received input from more than a thousand respondents. Um, more than 70% live, live or work in South DeKalb, and most of the respondents are not currently regular MARTA riders. We also learned by it, we also asked and learned about their preferences related to transit and willingness to pay for more transit in the area. During the open house, multiple participants indicated that they would prefer a more direct route into downtown Atlanta. Now that's key because in the next section, we'll show how, we'll show how new alter alternatives were added based on that feedback. Casey? Great. Yeah, thank you, Vita. Mm -hmm. All right, so now you've seen the um, the alternatives that we, again, this is a refresher of, of the tier one. So we, we did a detailed meeting on this um, last year and it's on our website, um, but you, you saw the alternatives that we looked at in tier one, you saw the criteria and you heard a little bit about our outreach efforts. Um, this is the summary of the scoring um, that we did for the, the initial 10 alternatives. Um, the, um, the, the six BRT alternatives um, were you know, raised to the top and we decided to advance those to tier two screening, which means that you know, we're going to study them even further, um, do some additional analysis um, and um, further refine those, those concepts. Um, the important thing to know here is this also includes two new alternatives that weren't initially on that first map you saw. Um, we did add um, the five points to zone crest options. Um, this has been studied in the past. It was part of the original um, locally preferred alternative study um, from back in 2012. Um, but when we went to the public meetings last year and as Vita said, we heard folks were really interested, like these, you know, these are nice, but we'd like to get straight downtown. That's where our jobs are. Um, so we heard that and we added um, five points options back into the mix. So these are the six that we are carrying forward into tier two. Um, since those are bus rapid transit options, I just wanna give a, a quick refresher um, on what is bus rapid transit. We, we call it BRT. Um, BRT is really the, um, the rail-like experience on a bus. Um, so what does that mean? Um, your bus is traveling in a dedicated lane or a, a dedicated busway. So it's not tied up in congestion. It's not tied up at um, traffic signals. There are special traffic signal technology that help the buses uh, breeze through the intersections in a, in a timely manner. Um, and um, and not not get tied up at too many intersections. So your uh, transit riders have a, a faster trip. It's a more reliable trip. Um, there are um, fewer stops than on a traditional local bus service, which means that um, your um, you have a more reliable trip, um, and a, and the travel time speed is is a little bit faster. Um, the the frequencies are also um, quite a bit greater because you have the dedicated lanes, you can actually um, have greater frequencies without the buses running into, you know, operational issues. So uh, BRT is expected to have, you know, at best 10 minute um, peak frequencies um, during the busiest times, which is pretty comparable to um, a lot of rail systems. Um, the stations, as opposed to just your typical um, local um, bus stops that you are familiar with today, seeing in DeKalb County, um, the stations are designed to have more of the rail-like amenities. Um, and like, visually, they um, to me, they, they kind of look like light rail stations. So much longer, um, you know, platforms um, with, um, with greater seating and shelter area. You'll have real-time arrival screens. So just like you have in the MARTA rail stations, you'll have screens telling you like how many minutes um, are left until your next bus comes and which direction it's heading. Um, you'll have off-board ticketing. So that's again, the kind of similar to rail. You don't have to, um, you know, it, the makes, it makes it a lot quicker to load the buses up to. You're not tapping your uh, breeze card on the bus, but you're paying before you get on. Um, level boarding is another thing that also makes it a lot easier and faster to board the buses. So just all of these features kind of combined really make the experience 
some more similar to rail and a lot um, a lot faster, a lot more convenient, and um, really resulting in that that better speed and better reliability. Um, branding is also a unique feature here. Um, MARTA has rolled out the MARTA Rapid brand that it intends to use for all of its bus rapid transit projects going forward. And the first one is actually under construction right now. It's the Summerhill Rapid project in the Summerhill neighborhood of Atlanta. So if you if you drive in that area, then you'll you'll see kind of the construction is, is underway um, right now. Um, but that that helps, that branding helps differentiate this service from um, the, you know, the, the traditional local bus um, routes that are out running. Um, today. Okay, so with that, we're going to dive into the new information today, and that's the tier two screening process. Um, so here's another map for you. So this map is the six um, tier two alternatives that we're advancing. Um, this has the, uh, the four that you saw earlier, um, and then the two new additional routes um, or alternatives that um, we added as a result of the public outreach last summer. Um, so just a, a quick orientation to this map. Um, all of the alternatives begin at the Stonecrest Transit Hub. So this is Stonecrest down here in the bottom right corner of the screen. Um, there are three different um, kind of options for the western end of the project. There's Indian Creek Station, Kensington Station, and then all the way down here, we've got five points in downtown. Um, and then two different route types. Um, we have interstate routes and surface street routes. So um, from Stonecrest, there are options to take I-20 and I-285 to either Indian Creek or Kensington Station. And then there's also the option to take I-20, stay on I-20 all the way into downtown um, and arrive at five points. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, the I-20 um, BRT is something that was studied um, in the, the previous um, iteration of this project. Um, the new thing now is the Summerhill Rapid project that I mentioned a moment ago. Um, so that is under construction. Um, so this little blue um, line right here, this is Capitol Avenue. Um, so there's the potential, you know, we think for this BRT route could um, connect into Capitol Avenue um, and utilize that um, that BRT lane, that transit lane that um, is under construction now and take it um, into downtown. Um, so that part is a little bit new. Um, the other um, route type is the surface street. So um, starting in Stonecrest, um, we have options that follow Covington Highway, um, making several stops in the South DeKalb area on Covington Highway, and then arriving at either the Indian Creek Station or the Kensington Station. And then we have the other option that also starts at Stonecrest, stops at the same locations on Covington Highway, and then turns off onto Glenwood, makes a few additional stops on Glenwood, um, and then jumps on I-20 to follow that same route um, to Capitol Avenue and into downtown. So these are the, um, the six BRT alternatives. Okay. So how are we evaluating these in tier two? So we showed you a few minutes ago, the tier one, um, a refresher on the tier one criteria. Um, there's a similarity and, and a difference. So in tier two, the, the similarity is that we're still staying true to the general criteria that the federal government uses to evaluate projects, right? We still wanna stick true to those themes and those, um, those concepts, those things that they look for. We want this to be competitive for federal funding. The difference is here in tier two, we're using a lot more detailed information. We're doing a lot more data collection. Um, in tier two, we did some higher level. We looked at demographics. We looked at land use sort of at a high level. Here we're looking at, we're, you know, we're doing our own um, ridership estimation. We're doing forecasts. We're doing cost estimates um, for each of the alternatives specifically. So we've got more granular information that gives us a better idea of how well these projects would perform. So um, first example um, is land use. Um, before in tier one, we were looking kind of more generally, what is the land use today and what is it going to be in the future? Here, we're, we're carrying that information forward, but we're also looking more specifically at affordable housing and how much affordable housing um, is located near the transit stations that we've identified on our alternatives. That's something that the federal government also looks at when they um, look at transit grants. 
Um, cost effectiveness. So we're, um, this is where, this is another really important one for the federal government. They want to make sure that their investments are going to um, cost effective projects. Um, so here we're looking at the average annual capital cost and the operating and maintenance costs. So that's that annual, you know, ongoing cost to run the service um, divided by the number of trips we're expected to generate for, from the service. Um, so that's an important one. Um, mobility improvements and congestion relief, these are tied to our ridership um, forecast, our ridership projection. So how many people do we think are going to be riding the new BRT service? Um, a mobility improvements, this measure is simply that, that total number of how many trips we're expected to serve. The congestion relief does a little bit deeper dive and it looks at how many trips do we think um, were going to be, could, could reasonably be attracted from vehicles. So how many people are getting out of their cars and onto the BRT service? That's what congestion looks like, looks at. And it also, um, we look at, you know, not only the number of people getting out of their cars, but um, what that impact has on the freeways um, in terms of, you know, easing congestion and what environmental benefits that results in. So what's the impact on air quality, on emissions, energy use, um, and et cetera. Transit reliability is one that we added um, to this project. Um, it's not always a, a, a federal criteria, but we felt it was important for this project. So here we're looking at um, how, you know, the, each of these alternatives, like how, what percentage of the corridor could reasonably be ex expected to have exclusive travel lanes, because that's really important to having a reliable and successful BRT system. Um, and then we're also looking at the travel time. So how quickly are we getting from point A to point B? Because at the end of the day, that's what is really important to our transit customers. Um, and last but not least um, is our economic development potential. Um, so, you know, Michael mentioned a little bit earlier, some of the transit oriented development work that MARTA is doing at the rail stations. Um, we also looked at what's the potential for doing some of that type of work, that type of master planning and land use work um, along these corridors um, for BRT. And then also looking at just what is, you know, how well are these projects, how well are these alternatives connecting to other activity centers? Um, and those are, you know, things like job centers, healthcare centers, um, housing developments, and that sort of thing. Okay. Oops. Are you guys seeing this slide? This slide is not coming up. All right, we'll come back to that in a second. Um, for some reason, it's not showing up. Um, okay, so after we've um, evaluated all of those, um, all of our all of our our alternatives using that criteria, um, we started noticing that you know um, not there's not one single alternative that really scores perfectly across the board across all of the criteria, right? So some of the alternatives do really well in some areas but they're not quite so um, successful in other areas. Um, and there's also, there's not one alternative that just performs very poorly across the board. That's, that should be discarded, right? Um, so our general takeaway is that all of the alternatives so far, all of the six, um, all of the six alternatives we have on the table right now have some merit and some um, are, are worth to, you know, worthwhile to continue studying. So, some of our takeaways, um, just to, to share with you, um, it's it's easiest to kind of compare the, the interstate alternatives, you know, those I-20 and 285 alternatives versus the surface street alternatives. So the ones on the map that followed um, Covington Highway and then Covington and Glenwood. So generally on the interstate alternatives, um, they typically have fewer stops um, and therefore a quicker travel time, shorter end to end. So that's that's a great benefit. On the flip side, when we're looking at the surface street options, um, they have more stops, which requires a little bit more time, uh, travel time, but it also provides better coverage. So more stops means access to more locations in the South DeKalb study area. So neither is really a, a pro or a con, those are just you know takeaways, just different trade-offs. Um, also on the um, interstate alternatives, when we looked at the ridership study, so that's where we you know, did our forecast to determine how many um, trips would be taken on each of the um, alternatives. 
We learned that the interstate alternatives um, were really good at getting people out of their cars and onto buses, right? So there, those were the those they performed well in terms of attracting new transit trips. On the other hand, the surface street alternatives sometimes had greater ridership, but they were pulling most of their ridership from existing local routes. So it's not a plus or a minus, it's just a difference. Um, the surface street alternatives are really serving kind of your core existing um, MARTA customers. Um, the interstate alternatives are serving some of the say, some of your um, current customers, but also um, some new, new folks as well. Um, on the interstate side, um, the express lanes, um, we know that GDOT has express lanes planned on 285 and in other parts of the region. Um, on I-20, um, inside the perimeter especially, um, they, they, those express lanes are not funded. So that's kind of a little bit of uncertainty. Um, and that's just, um, again, not a plus or a minus, but just something we have to continue uh, to coordinate on um, and, and talk with our partners at GDOT. Um, both of the, uh, either of the options, all of the alternatives on the table would require some level of partnership and coordination um, and also you know, significant investment. So if we're looking on the flip side over on the surface street alternatives, um, we also would require some, um, those exclusive bus lanes are dependent on widening surface streets. So again, just, you know, they both require some level of investment and partnership. On the interstate side, um, these alternatives have, um, we talked about transit oriented development, TOD earlier. Um, the planning work has kind of already been done to lay the foundation for good TOD development. So the land use and the zoning is there uh, to support um, TOD today. Um, and that's that hasn't happened on the Covington and Glenwood routes yet. That doesn't mean to say that it can't happen in the future if there's interest and willingness to do that. Um, but that's just the, the current state of it. That's that's it is has been done on the interstate options um, already. Um, and then just one other like kind of closing thought on the surface street alternatives. Um, if you're if you're selecting one of these options, you're putting in um, bus lanes. You're investing in stations. You're investing in intersection upgrades. Um, there's also the opportunity to piggyback on that and do really good pedestrian and safety improvements for the whole corridor. So you really have a, a kind of a multimodal um, corridor um, improvement, sort of corridor transformation in one package that also delivers um, a transit project. So that's kind of a, another um, sort of takeaway that, that we had on the surface street options. Now, um, comparing Stonecrest um, to Five Points versus the uh, Stonecrest to Kensington and Indian Creek stations. These are just some more takeaways and trade-offs. So for the options that go directly to Five Points, um, those options generally have fewer stops. And again, that's, that's the trade-off. If you have fewer stops, you have generally like a higher average speed. Um, on the converse, when we're going um, to Kensington and Indian Creek, um, a nice benefit there is that we're providing more access to those stations in DeKalb County that have a lot of local bus service um, transferring at those spots. So we're kind of expanding again that cup. It's kind of building on that theme. Um, those two, those options that go to Kensington and Indian Creek um, do kind of help support that connectivity and um, access and service within uh, DeKalb County. Um, the routes going straight to five points, of course, you get more direct access to downtown, which is a plus for a lot of people who are working in downtown or who are headed to the red or gold rail lines to transfer. Um, of course, on the flip side, um, if, you're, if your trip is going to Kensington or Indian Creek, it's going to require at least one transfer to get to downtown. Um, we did also find when we did our ridership analysis that the five points alternatives um, did a better job at serving transit dependent ridership. And what that means are what that means is um, it, it does a better job at, at serving riders who don't have access to vehicles within their household and that transit is their their primary mode of getting around town. So that's an important um, thing for Marta to consider. Um, and lastly, um, all of the options on the table do um, make use um, and you know do a good job of utilizing other MARTA investments um, or other projects that MARTA has other underway. Um, so for the five points options, um, there is the opportunity to connect into the Candler Road 
ART project, and Michael pointed that out on the screen earlier at the beginning of the presentation. Um, and there's also the opportunity to connect into the MARTA Rapid Summerhill, which is the first BRT that is under construction right now. For Kensington and Indian Creek, we also have the option to um, make good use of the uh, TOD work that's happening right now at the Kensington and Indian Creek stations. So bringing more transit service into those areas that are um, undergoing, you know, redevelopment and, and adding density and, and new um, developments um, that just kind of further um, supports um, the, the TOD investments that are being made there. And I'm going to pause here for a second and see if I can bring back the slide that we missed. And I'll just give me one moment to do that. And while Casey's doing that, I just want to remind you to um, drop any questions you may have. Uh, please use the Q&A section for that. Um, as we're getting towards the end, we will open up the uh, presentation and do some Q&A. Thank you. And Casey, if you're having issues pulling it up, I can share my screen too. I've got it ready here. Yeah, that would actually be helpful. Yeah, thank you. Sure. Okay, bear with me here. Great. And you should all see my yep. screen now. Yep, that's it. Thank you, Sanan. Um, okay, so. After I just talked about all of those trade-offs and um, pluses and minuses of, of all of the, um, the six alternatives, um, this is a summary um, of all of the scoring with all of the criteria that we looked at. Green is generally a better score. Red is generally a, a not so good score. And the yellow and orange are, are sort of in the middle ground. Um, and, I, and I hope, you know, this is a lot of information to take in at, at once, but I hope that it, this, um, that, you know, the, the concept of trade-offs and there not being one perfect option kind of shows through in this. Um, there, there is not one row that is all green. There's not one row that's all red. Um, so um, all of these, you know, I think what that means for us and for this team and, and, and moving forward is that we do want some input on this. You know, a good planning process is a mixture of all of the data and all of the, the input from people um, in the community and, and leadership. So we, we want some input on these six options. We want some input on the process. Um, so, you know, please, um, we can, you can share that today with us when we get to the, the comment section and you can also um, visit our website at any time and contact us through the website to share in for um, your feedback later on. Um, but the takeaway here is that we have not, we're not selecting a single one of these to, you know, as, as the, um, the preferred at this time. Um, all of them are, are um, continuing through um, the, the analysis process. Um, all right, so thank you, Sanan, for pulling this back up. And I think now I'm turning it over to you for the polling question. Perfect. Thank you, Casey. Yeah. And as Casey mentioned, we are... Um, looking for input from the public. We realize that this is a tough decision and there are a lot of alternatives with lots of, um, well, they each have their own pros and cons and challenges and benefits. So um, we have one poll question for you, just one. And you can access that question by going to menti.com in your browser. That's M e-n-t-i dot com and entering the code that you see here on the screen or you can use your phone camera to scan a QR code uh, and you will it'll take you to menti.com and you'll still want to put in this code which is 92682130 And once you do that, you will see, I'll move it along. And again, if you missed it, we've got the website up here. 
still minty.com. We've got the code here at the top of the screen. And the poll question is, it's most important for transit to connect south to cab with, so this goes back to the map that Casey and the slides that Casey was discussing earlier. We're going from, we, we wanna, all, all six alternatives start at Stonecrest, but from Stonecrest, where do we want to connect to? Do we wanna connect to downtown Atlanta at the Five Points Marta Station? Do we wanna to connect to Kensington Station, Indian Creek Station, or is there another location? Doesn't necessarily need to be um, a Marta Station, but if there's another location that you all would like this service to connect to, you can choose that option. And if you do choose the other option, please be sure to specify that location in the chat box. So we've got three responses so far. I will give it another little bit for folks to uh, respond to the poll question. We've got a hand raised. How would you like to handle this? Um, yeah, Demetrius, mm -hmm. um, if you can put your question or your comment in the Q&A box, that's the best way for us to get to access it. Um, and just, you know, as you guys are pulling up the menti.com and putting in, this is this has been interesting for us. We've asked this question and we've done this polling question in a few different ways. Um, Vita mentioned earlier our transit station pop-ups. So we've been going out to um, the MARTA station, the MARTA rail stations, and sharing information about the project, um, handing out flyers about this meeting, actually. <laughs> um, so you might have gotten one. Um, but we've also been asking this polling question. So we've had we've done this with like a, a board at the transit stations um, and getting people's feedback there. And then we've also done this with our um, with our um, with our technical stakeholders and the technical stakeholder advisory committee meeting. So it's interesting for, for us to see um, the responses from the different groups. Hey, Casey, um, Demetrius said that's what he needed to know. He just noticed that the chat box was disabled and he wanted to add his selection for Indian Creek. Oh, great. Thank you, Demetrius. All right, we've got one more vote that just came in for Indian Creek. Okay. Okay. Thank you all. We appreciate your input. Uh, I will pass it. I will pass the screen share back to Casey and I will continue presenting here. Okay. All right. Well, that moves us into next steps. And Tanan, you want to take it from here? Yes. I... I... I'm having trouble seeing your screen right now, Casey. Okay. Is, is my screen visible to anyone else? No? How about now? There it is. Perfect. Great. These are the next steps to advance planning of the South to Cab Transit Initiative. So of course we are now in fall 2024 where we are sharing the tier two results with you all, uh, stakeholders and elected officials. Moving on into next year, uh, MARTA staff is planning to review all of our outreach results 
and recommending what's called a locally preferred alternative or LPA to the MARTA board. And that would be one on alternative. Uh, moving into the middle of next year, we are looking at evaluating the funding strategies so we can get this project funded. Um, there are many different potential funding sources, so uh, we intend to leave no stone unturned in looking at the potential ways to, to fund this project. Then moving into 2026, we'll go into project development and the environmental review process. And throughout this whole time, we plan to um, keep coming back out to the public, to stakeholders for outreach. Um, so you can expect to hear from us again sometime soon um, and keep checking the project website. That's southdecaptransit.com. Next slide, please. And just for as a reminder, our project manager for the South Decap Transit Initiative is Tracy Robertson. Um, and we've got her email address here in case anyone has any questions or comments. And of course, you are also welcome to enter questions and comments directly into the Zoom chat. Um, this presentation is being recorded and it will be posted on the project website along with recordings from all of our previous meetings. And with that, I wanna thank you all for joining and I will pass it over to Vida, who will facilitate the question and answer process. Thank you, Sanaa. Uh, and yes, we actually do have a question that was dropped into the Q&A. Um, and the question reads, will the project stop at Wesley Chapel Station. It was kind of difficult to see what the station stops were, if there were, or if those were definitely stations that was on your map earlier. So, um, Casey or Sanaa, would one of you all like to handle that yeah. one? Yeah, I can take that question. Okay. Um, yeah, certainly. We've definitely identified, and I can go back to the map really quickly, just um, so we can take another look at it while we're here. Um, so yes, um, uh, the interstate options, um, do you have a proposed stop at Wesley Chapel Road? Um, this is uh, one of those stations that has been included in the project for some time, going back to uh, you know previous studies. Um, we're definitely like selecting stop locations is a, is a balance between, you know, optimizing ridership and, and access with all of your travel time and operations. Um, so these are things that we'll continue to look at as we um, take these alternatives further and further down the road um, into project development. Um, so, you know, currently these are the stops that we've identified. We've, we've pulled out places that we think are common destinations um, from talking to people, but also common uh, or destinations that, that pop out of the data that, that tell us that these are important um, for, for transit riders. Um, so that being said, because we are in this planning phase, um, now is the time if you have ideas or if you have comments about some of the stations we've proposed, or if you think that an important location is missing um, from our map, now is the time to share that with us um, so we can consider it and include it um, as we go along. Um, and you can do that again through you know, this meeting today, dropping it in the Q&A box. You can also go to our website afterwards, contact Tracy Roberson, um, through our website and share your feedback um, at a later time. Okay, great, thank you. Um, we have one other question, um, pretty quick, simple. Why isn't rail being considered? Sure, um, I can take that question if y'all- Thank you, Michael. So um, expanding rail or expanding the train from Indian Creek Station was one of the alternatives that we considered in the first part of the analysis. Now, because bus rapid transit moves people to and from their des destinations as efficient, or even in some instances when it's done really well, uh, it can work more efficiently or as efficiently uh, as heavy rail. And importantly, it can be constructed at a fraction of the cost and in a shorter time frame. 
Um, and so, as we discussed earlier, uh, bus rapid transit works just like a train, except it runs in its own lane, uh, kind of like a train on rubber tires, some have said. Um, and our goal at the end of the day at MARTA is moving folks to and from their destinations, their home, their work, their uh, place of worship, where they go to buy groceries as fast and efficiently as possible. And we across the entire system are looking at bus rapid transit as a way of meeting those goals. Um, we see when bus rapid transit is implemented both in Georgia and in elsewhere and some of our partner agencies, we're able to see a lot of economic growth that occurs coinciding with bus rapid transit. We see that people are able to reach their destinations faster and more efficiently with bus rapid transit. And this is a new sort of system that we're really excited to bring to the metro Atlanta area. Um, and so that's why in that tier one part of the analysis, we phased out the heavy rail and light rail options and further advanced the bus rapid transit options. Great, thank you. And the final question we have for now, um, unless uh, we do get any more um, in the Q&A, is um, how is this project going to be funded? Yeah, I can take that one. Um, so looking at potential funding sources is one of our next steps, is one of the things that we want to do um, next in this project. Um, we also, this is also a topic that was covered um, in pretty extensive detail in one of our earlier meetings. So again, um, do check, I mean, I'll answer the question now, but do check out the, um, the presentations from um, our previous meetings on the project website. There's some really good information, like really detailed information about federal grant programs. Um, but there is one program in particular that is uh, probably the best fit for a project of this scope and of this size. And that's the Federal Transit Administration's Capital Improvement Grant Program. We call it CIG, Capital Improvement Grant. Um, it, it does come with, um, it's, it's the best fit funding source probably for a BRT project, but it does come with some strings attached as most um, federal funding does. And it's not a guaranteed funding source, so it's very competitive. So all of the transit agencies in the country who are looking at expanding their system are looking to the CIG program. Um, for their, their primary um, funding source. So one of the things that we'll be doing um, going forward is um, doing a little bit further study and developing the, the CIG score, or what we, how we think the, the project would score under the CIG's um, scoring system to, to give MARTA a good indication of how competitive um, the project would be for funding. Um, the FTA requires a score of at least a medium rating, um, which is dependent on you know the cost and the ridership, um, and you know its impacts to um, the community and benefits to the community. Um, a, a bunch of different criteria that we we kind of covered earlier on, um, and the other so that's half of the equation. The other half of the equation is um, that the project sponsor or the agency that's requesting the funding has to also demonstrate a significant amount of local funding commitment to the project. So that's one of the key things to know about federal funding um, is that whenever the federal fund, whenever the federal government issues um, funding, that it, they're they're typically requiring the local or the state or the re, or the, the the sponsoring agency to come up with some additional funds to match that. Um, so that's that's another thing that we'll have to explore um, as we get further along. Um, project, you know, any transportation project of this magnitude, whether it's transit or highway or, you know, rail or bus, um, will likely require um, a variety of funding sources. So it will likely not just be, you know, one grant or one funding, one agency that that provides all of the funding. It will likely require um, partnerships and um, um, a broad funding strategy. Okay. And we did just get one question that just popped up. Um, I noticed that Covington Highway looks like that is an option or an alternative. And if that is selected, what happens to the current bus route um, that's on that road or Route 115? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I can take that one too. And then if Marta has any um, follow-up to that. Um, so 
Um, typically, as a rule, um, MARTA generally doesn't recommend running two overlapping services um, on the same corridor. So for if Covington is selected um, and BRT is implemented, you know, from Stonecrest to Kensington, um, it's likely, it likely would replace the, the underlying um, bus route 115 that currently follows um, practically the same route. Uh, right, and that's not set in stone. That's um, that's that's what typically um, happens. But we we would continue to evaluate that and and make sure that you know the the one fifteen riders are are still served by um, the the new service. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Casey. Thank you, Michael. Um, I am not seeing any more questions in the Q and A section. So. With that, um, again, thank you all for attending this evening. Stay up to date on the project at southdecaptransit.com and have a good evening, everyone. Thank you for attending. Thank you, everyone.